Ladies, gentlemen, and children of all ages, welcome back to Make, Repair, Recycle, where today we will be turning this pile of bits into... Excellent. Just look at that. So, in this video, I'm going to be making a new power supply to go with my DIY sim wheel. If you haven't looked at those videos, there'll be a link somewhere along here that'll get you caught up. The sim wheel is powered from a 12 volt power supply currently, which is a bench supply I made some time ago using a PC ATX power supply. Now, I want to use that one back out here because it's got five volts and three volts out of it, whereas I want to make a dedicated one for the sim wheel using this natty box here and an old power supply I've had kicking around the house from an old HT PC that I built years ago. Now this, if this stays in focus, is a 12 volt power supply that can supply 24 amps. Now I don't think that wheel will consume anywhere near 24 amps, but to find out how much it does consume, I have bought another marvel of eBay and Chinese manufacturer voltmeter and ammeter in this natty little digital gauge. The lovely thing about this is it came with no instructions. So this is going to be fun, but we'll work that out as we go along. So the first job is to extricate this uh, board from the chassis because I don't need it in here anymore. I'm going to take these out and then we're going to find a way of mounting it inside this box using the terminal post to connect the steering wheel to the power supply with some connectors. And I would like to try and find a way of using the fan in the top and the back because one of the problems with the other power supply which you'll probably see and hear in the other videos is there's a fan in the end of it because i thought it'd keep it cool um, but there's no airflow in it it just blows air in and it doesn't go anywhere so it, ca it has got mm, warm shall we say while i've been using the wheel and hopefully at the end of all this i can plug this into the wheel uh, and we can see we can do some more testing with the wheel and see how much current is drawing day two so a little bit further on, we now have the board mounted into the box. We've got our incoming on-off switch. We've got our kettle plug, kettle lead connector. It's now a question of putting all the wires together and hopefully not letting the pixies out. So the green and the black needs to be wired together. So the power on, so this would normally go to the switch on the front of the uh, PC, but if you wire them together, obviously that pulls it in the ground and makes it work. The large power resistor, this thing, is going to go between 5 volts and ground. Let's just put some load through it, and then the 12 volt and the ground, these all need tidying up. Uh, I may not use all of these, I might just take half or something, uh, and then just put these onto the terminal post with a spare ground and 12 volt to wire into the sensor. Now from the look of it, uh, these two, the thin ones, need to go off to the terminal post and measure what's being drawn through uh, the supply. And I'm actually going to take the supply of two separate leads. Whether that makes any difference or not, I guess we'll find out. A few moments later. Okay, so as we approach the witching hour this evening, we now have power supply mounted in the box. Uh, the green to earth wire I've put through the switch. So we can turn the output on and off, we can turn the input on and off as well. The power resistor is tucked up there in some tape, which I'll do for now, just to see if this works between the 5 volt and the ground, based on what I can find from the eBay purchase. The wires, I think, are in the right place for um, power and sensing, but I guess we'll find out. I've managed to plug the end fan and fan into the power socket on the board for the fan that was in the case. I don't know if there's going to be room to put the top fan on. The original idea was to put this in the lid. But I think with all of the connectors and such, we're only going to run out of space in there. So, if 
I can find a lead. Let's fire it up and see if I can let the pixies out. So I'm going to pop the lid on this because I don't want uh, to electrocute myself. I kind of like my fingers the way they are. And uh, I have electrocuted myself once and blew myself across the garage. And I really don't want to do it again. Now, stupidly, I don't have anything to actually plug into the front of this, but I'm just hoping that for now it fires up and gives us a nice blue front. Okay, step one, switch on the wall. No explosions, it's a good start. Switch on the back. Primed and ready. Fingers crossed. Hmm. <laughs> One eternity later. Well, after much wailing and gnashing of teeth, I think I found the problem. Now, I will own up to one thing. I did manage to put the positive and the negative on the input. Um, sorry, the wrong way around. Now, when I first fired this thing up and went, because <laughs> uh, nothing happened, I thought I might have blown something when I wired these two backwards. However, it transpires that all of this is fine and it works. And to prove that, I will turn it on. It does help if you turn it on at the wall. And there we go. As you see, I've now put a light in it, so it says when it's on, fan is running. Uh, there is a 12 volt output, which if I put these on here, it's been negative, but you get the idea. It's holding a very, very nice 12.3. So the supply actually works, which wasn't actually the problem. Now. Kind of annoyingly, I've just ordered another one of these off eBay um, for the princely sum, I think, of $9.99, so it's not exactly going to break the bank. But this wasn't the problem. This little basket from China was the problem. So this is junk. So annoyingly, I've now got a very nice hole in my box. So I'm going to need to get another one from eBay, and fingers crossed, the next one actually bloody works. 3.28 a.m. So after some eBay searching, this may not be completely um, for jizzles. This uh, may still work. I have been looking at other adverts, well I was actually looking to buy another one, but probably not from the same source where I bought this one from, and I found a different wiring diagram. Um, I'll put a proper picture up of it, but... So, the wiring diagram on the one I bought, where I bought this from, and there's other ones, depending on how much current and voltage and other things it could be sensing. So, what I'm going to try and do now is wire this up as per the new diagram, and then see if it works. Okay. Good enough for me. Careful. Don't want to let the pixies out just yet. I am going to put the lid back on because, mm, because electricity. So, mm. now this has been working. Once I've taken the, taken the voltmeter ammeter back out again, that was causing it to drip out, worked fine. And in my last video, it was powering the wheel quite well and did turn some laps um, in project cars. Now, a couple of times, not in that video, I'll be honest, it has tripped out. Uh, that, I think, was either to do with the crocodile clips on the back of the motor touching, because uh, I haven't sorted out the actual power supply leads properly yet, or the wheel in project cars, if you're not hanging on to it when the race starts, it does put a little bit of load in you know, one way or the other, I guess, depending on where it's the car sitting on the track of brands. You've got a bit of a, 
an incline. So the wheel spins, and if you don't grab hold of it, it spins all the way to lock stops and, and hits the um, program stop in the EMC software, and then it cut out. So, but apart from that, it worked fine. Um, I'm going to do some more stuff. I'm going to do some stuff in high racing soon. Empty socket up here. Right. So, we know the LED will work because that's wired in. Not wired in. Power is on. Let's. Oh, look at that. Witchcraft and pixies. So, what we ought to do now is find something to wire in the front of it. Uh, to see if we can get some um, current readings. Yes! Excellent. Just look at that. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. So I've got a little simple test set up here. I've got the wheel um, plugged into the PC with the EMC utility tracking the wheel. The power supply unit is plugged in as powering the wheel. And I've also put the ammeter in place so we can measure the the current that this thing is drawing to see how accurate this thing is here. The wheel has got within the software within the EMC utility there is a, a, a setup where you can set the maximum angle for the wheel. This is currently set to 900 and as we turn the wheel round we'll start to see yep the current on the ammeter reading starting to go up and if this is set to 900 degrees half of that is 450 which means bump we've hit the lock stops and we can see got to give it a bit more to try and get it to go past that but the ammeter is reading ooh, six and a half i think that hit there something like that and the ammeter down here is only recording something like 0.2 Although the, the voltage is clearly dropping from the 12.4, um, which is slightly depressing because the reason for spending all the time to get that gauge working was to try and give us a reading on the box that didn't mean I had to put the ammeter into it as well to see how much current we're drawing um, through actual use and racing. So I think this video is probably about as long as it needs to be at this point. I'm going to do some more investigation on this. Chinese joy of a meter and see whether it is the meter or the way of wider or something else I will also do some more uh, Actual use of the wheel and if I can't use that I'll use the ammeter and we'll see What sort of reads we can get in various different racing games different cars different tractors just because I'm just interested to see how Much current this is drawing and the reason for that is if if I'm going to change the gearing and we move away as I want to from the chain drive into a belt drive, it gives you the option to change the cogs and to change the gear ratio. And obviously changing the gear ratio is gonna draw more current. So that will be the next video, I think, and hopefully some other developments that I'm working on as well. If you found this interesting and the development of my uh, DIY sim wheel, Float your boat, hit subscribe and hit the bell and then everything that comes out you'll get to see. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.